Right. Why are you wearing spock ears? Because we're dressed up. <laughs> You're a bit underwhelming, actually. I just like that. <laughs> yeah. Hang on. That's more. Well, you're slightly better dressed. <laughs> Marginally. You're not with a. Why aren't you feeling as snobby as we are? <laughs> Happy Christmas! <laughs> so, we're going to do a little rundown of our year of travelling. Our, and by that I mean Dad and Mum's year of travelling. So, let's start off with. Well, David, you can say most of the time. Well, David and Jess as well. Yes. So, let's. January, back when there was no Covid. Bristol. Oh, yes. What was the campsite like in Bristol? David? Eh. It was. It was. It did the job. <laughs> That's all I have to say, really. There was no it way. was the first ever time that we'd been to a city centre car park. Car park? Car park. Car park. <laughs> yeah, we started doing a car park for four nights. <laughs> No, I was thinking about, in my mind there was flashing by me, I got one that was a Friday night and trying to get through the rush hour yeah. was quite fun, but anyway, yeah, so that bit was a car park, but the car park was, was alright though. Car park was apt though, because we parked in the sort of gravel bit, didn't we, at the end of the bit that looked like a car park, that bit. Yeah. But, what was nice about the site was it opened out onto the river, didn't it? That was pretty. That was pretty. I thought it was quite good, yeah, the back of it was super. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right, and the pub next door. That was good as well. Yeah, as long as you get the timing right, otherwise it's busy. Yeah, we did. It was early. But it's all about going around the back. The front of the campsite is not appealing, but like most things, hidden treasures. Get out for the first time this year, so it's, mid oh, it's late January now. Well, good morning. We're here at the Baltic Wharf caravan site. You're looking straight down the river where the boats are, and you can see the, all the colourful houses. It's a really lovely spot. I have to say, the food in there was absolutely superb. Caravan Club site, a few pans just the left. Just there. Then let's go to February, the month of love. <laughs> you went to. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Have you got a love interest, Georgia? <laughs> no, <laughs> no, it's a cry for help. <laughs> <laughs> so you went to Hunter's Moon. Yes, we did. Now, we actually went down there for a reason, though, didn't we? To go and see my dad, mm -hmm. which is good. I thoroughly enjoyed that. Mm -hmm. We did have to contend with Dennis, though, didn't we? Yeah, Storm Dennis. I.e. lots of rain, and that's been somewhat of a theme this year for us, hasn't it? Rain. And very strong winds. Puddles. Why have an awning? <laughs> Flooding. <laughs> how, did it, how did it affect the caravan? How did it affect your, the, like, physicalities of being there? We were not too bad. Um, in the caravan states, we've, we've decided to move up to hydraulics in terms of its steadies. And there are six of them rather than the, just the four corners, so you've got two in the middle. So it makes it quite stationary. So that's actually quite worked out quite well mm -hmm. for us. So it, so it makes it quite solid. And again, no warning went up because the winds were really strong. There are downsides like the there, the dog walking area, which was big, was waterlogged. Um, yeah, was just fact, slightly. A lake. It was well, it a lake, a bit, so we couldn't go in it at all. There's a bit of a clue on the way in because you bypass a boat. So uh, what advice would you give to anyone who finds themselves in a storm? What do you need? Don't put your awning up. Drive slow. Yeah, Drive whatever you slow. do, don't even even try to put your awning up. And if you know a storm's coming, take your awning down. Get a little pop-up tent like we've got. Yeah, uh, a little two-man job. You can eat, we fit our table in it, our shoes, and everything gets in the way of the caravan just goes in there. Yeah. No, we don't need any poles for that one. It's really good. We've used it for years. Even I know how to put it up, and that's saying something. Um, we're on our second um, caravan trip of 2020 on the way to Dorset. Um, it's also the day that Storm Dennis hits the UK. So yeah, as usual, uh, perfect timing on our part. I have brought the awning, but it's not going up. And so opening up my trusty Windfinder Pro app and as you can see Sunday, so we're today Saturday um, Sunday things are not looking good, look at the weather conditions Wind is 69 miles per hour I think overall they've actually come out of this rather well Oh dear Here's all you weren't on that page then And it says no kite flying I've had cables I think kite flying is the least of our concerns today 
Come on, Jess. She give up. Oh, and there's a bird just out of reach there, look. <sighs> so now it comes to the best part of the year. Lockdown. <laughs> lockdown, lockdown, lockdown. Which was being locked down. So, the caravan, what yeah, was it? Yeah, what was the me, uses it, for it? It made me get to see you, you had to come back. I was already here. Yeah, she was working. I was here, my exams, yes. my yes. exams were cancelled. I was sat here. Revising and then all of a sudden I had nothing to do. Oh, hello. Are you going to come and join me? Yep. Hold on. So we have another yeah. office, don't we now? Yeah. So. I think, yeah, we no, we don't know what's going to happen. The situation with the coronavirus has got a lot worse and we now need to take it very seriously. We don't know if we're going to get away in the caravan or when. Because it yeah. is pretty self-contained. It's got everything we need. Yeah. Or, you know, if it became necessary, we could do a bit of self-isolation there. And also it gives us a bit of privacy, so it's just a sensible use of our caravan asset. Well it will be then, um, because you do tend to shout a lot when you're on the phone. And I, oh, I don't in my office. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What happened? Well, firstly, uni went to online teaching, so I was stuck in my uni house, not actually going to uni. And that didn't work very well. I was staying for work at the weekend and then while I was on shift they announced that work was going to be closing all over the UK. So I wish I nearly got attacked at work by a customer. And then, yeah, and then I was just stuck in my house with no food, no uni to go to, no work. So mum and dad came to get me. Um. And you've been working in here already, haven't you, Fiona? Yeah. Um, now we're on full lockdown, and this operates as an office. Because I'm quite loud and I am quite busy, I spend a lot of time on the phone, and using the kitchen as an office is just frustrating for everybody. I had A-levels. I don't know. I, all my work that I've done will now go towards my grade, so they said I'll find out by the end of July. I'm going to finish my coursework, hand that in, next week and the week after and then I'll be done. Um, I used to work at an ice cream shop but as everything's um, gone down I now don't have a job but luckily I'm being furloughed. But you're not allowed to do anything. I'm not allowed to do anything, I'm home alone. Home alone, so that means you're, um, that means you can help us around the house lots, doesn't it? I'm busy. Hey David. Is this your bedroom or is this your new office? My new office. Ah, so what, what do the uh, school do? Well they email me the work and I either complete it on paper or it's online so I do it on a website and then they'll see if I've completed it on the website or not. July came. There was eased stuff and where did you go? Siren's Esther. Well, Siren's Esther was only a long weekend for us, but it was um, after having had what? Four months. That four was months. four months. Oh. Yeah, four months of lockdown. So, um, yes, and we had the caravan already, so we thought, let's book Siren's Esther, which is 20 minutes away from us. So, it's obviously time of COVID. What precautions and stuff were there? What brilliant, brilliant precautions were put in place when you got to Siren Sester. Uh, two basic things, the reception area and check-in is different and um, using the toilet blocks were different. And I don't think I need to say anything. How, how are they different, I ask? If a hook is spare, you put your rubber band on it and go and do your stuff mm -hmm. and then come back out and take your rubber band. If all the, all the hooks are in use, you have to wait. Oh, okay. And I thought this was a good idea for toilets. You know, you know if it's full, there's lots of bands out there, you can't go in, you have to wait. Um, except that these are only as good as the people that actually do what they're told. As I have found, most times I've gone to the loo, there's been one or two bands, and maybe one person in the toilet, maybe none. Or people come in with their children and go out, without using any bands at all so that's what I would say good idea in practice I'm not sure if it actually works we did however find a couple of dog friendly pubs mm -hmm. to 
to thank Jess for... Yeah, we did. Okay, then we went summer holiday. And we went, we took the ferry, didn't we? I backtrack a little bit. First of all, it was off. Then it was on, then it was off, and then it was all back on again. And then because of these travel corridors and things opened. Yes, so when the corridor was opened, so to speak, we left as soon as we possibly could. Yeah, but also it was a bit tenterhooks, wasn't it, as to whether there'd be the travel corridor would close once we were away and we'd have to quarantine and all of that hoo ha. We so were we just really bit lucky. the bullet and go for it. We it? were lucky. Yeah. The first we went to Germany, which is where I wanted to go, I did. German for GCSE. I love the country and we went to the place I went to many a year ago in my youth. What do you mean in your youth? In my youth. <laughs> do you really fancy a curry at four o'clock in the morning or fish and chips? Morning up and get all the amenities plugged in. And I revisited it and it was just as good, but then you were there, so yeah. <laughs> what do you mean you were there? Did you hear that? You were there. <laughs> but we're off today to Fantasia Land. And it was this ride, a roller coaster which rivals any anywhere in the world, well at least any that we've been to. It would have been really nice though if we woke up that morning with croissants or something like yes, that. Yes. I had a bit of a problem with the croissant issue. Right, okay, when we're away, especially in France, Germany or anywhere in Europe, we like to order croissant for breakfast and most campsites offer that. You order the night before and then you collect early in the morning. So they told me here, fill out the form, which I did, and put it in the box. So I put it in this box. Hang on. That box? That box. When, ready? So when Steve came down to get our croissant in the morning, they said they hadn't had an order. There was no order from us. The mistake I made, even though I was really mad, it was to put it in the post box for German post. What I'd miss was this actually that box. And because there's no the English translation, I didn't know that meant red box. So I'm going to give it another try and hopefully get the right box this time. So I think the German post man or woman got a bit of a surprise when they got an order for eight class on an eight pound chocolate. Yeah, I, bet, I bet they're getting that quite a lot. Yeah. So when, when we're in Brittany, our main campsite, when we were in Quimper. Yeah, Quimper. Um, what were your highlights? Where were the favourite places we went to? For me, Pont de Ras. Plog off, plog off, plog off. <laughs> we must be the only family that look on the map and think, that's a funny name for a place, yeah, we'll go we'll there. just go there. <laughs> what a view. But plog off itself was nothing, it was a hamlet. But That's we all about plog off. Um, um, brief interlude of mum talking about plog off. What was your highlight? No, I want to talk about you get get up. Up. I wanted to say we just, um, that's fine, that's 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 that. I don't know why. <laughs> because I wanted to say we chose plog off. We kept seeing signs for Point de Ras, or Point de Ras, whatever you say. Okay. And we decided oh, when we saw the plug off, it's just like a collection of houses. We'd go there. Okay. My 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 um my um highlight was whatever it was called, Cons Con 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 Oh, that place you know. Con yeah. yeah. Like Sermione. I want to go back there. That was great. That was a little find that George that, found. That was really good actually. Mm. Is yeah. that your one, that one? Yeah, Let's just follow them because people seem to know where they're going. Let's follow the mm. locals. Yeah. And we followed and suddenly it just it just opened up just a massive shopping area, but it was like so it was so compact and it was so tiny and you just followed it for miles. It was it was great. I thought that was fabulous as well, I have to say. Yeah. And, yeah. and yes, I agree with you, we'll have to go back. And I reckon you could probably spend at least another day there. Or all this stuff on the outside. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We didn't even get a chance to have a look at it, did we? Great fish and chips. Yeah, really good No, it was good fish and chips, I have to say. Mine was when we actually went into Quimper and it started off with just walking around trying to find a little market like we did in Italy a few years ago. Yeah. And that was beautiful. And we did find one, but it was pretty bad. 
because it was just food. Just food one, wasn't it? And yeah. fish. And really expensive, like fish. handbag and jewellery and stuff. Fish and so, fish. And fish. And, and fish. fish. And guess what it smelled like? Fish. <laughs> But I have to say, mm. I have another one actually, Go on then. which has to be the beach, because that day on the beach, yeah, I know. We that went was to lovely. the beach, we did, and we walked all the way down the beach. Mm. And I have to say, watch the film because I haven't seen a beach like that for a long time. There's even horses on it. Yeah, it was. It was lovely. The beach was lovely, and loads of ways to enjoy it along the paths, weren't there? Yeah, and uh, I think that's a feature <clears> of the Brittany area as a whole, by looks of it, because that went on for miles and miles and miles. I had a main name going to France. Whilst we were there, I was like, you know what, I really want, I'll cry if I don't have it. And it's a crepe mm. with Nutella and banana on it. So we went, I had the crepe, and it was burnt. <laughs> and I don't think I've ever wanted to cry in public so much. <laughs> <laughs> Crepes kind of burn. <laughs> Quimper or Comper is a very beautiful place with lots to look at and we made the most of it. It's also very famous for its pottery. Oh, look at that. Yeah. Yeah, a bit like that. Let's turn around this one. Hello to you. So that was well worth a visit and very surprising when you get inside. That's it for this one. We hope you found it useful and please don't forget to subscribe and hit the little bell. Thank you.